posterior polar cataracts poses a greater surgical challenge to the ophthalmic surgeon hence it needs to be differentiated from posterior subcapsular cataracts it should not be missed even in cases of associated dense nucleus sclerosis or dense posterior subcapsular cataracts the main intraoperative surgical concerns are increased risk of posterior capsule rupture vitreous loss and nuclear drop According to a previous study the incidence of posterior capsule rupture in PPCs was estimated to be 36% but now with improved diagnosis this rate has come down The posterior capsule is a thin structure of about 4 microns in thickness due to the dense adherence of opacities to the thin posterior capsule or a pre-existing posterior capsule defect can make the PC weak and fragile hence proven for rupture during intraoperative maneuvers during cataract surgery therefore a proper preoperative assessment in cases of posterior polar cataracts is essential which helps to anticipate the intraoperative complications during cataract surgery Clinical diagnosis of posterior polar cataracts can be made on meticulous slit lamp examination which shows thick white circular discoid plaques adherent to the posterior capsule. But integrity of posterior capsule is difficult to be evaluated on a slit lamp. Various classifications are used to grade posterior polar cataracts based on their clinical appearance. Imaging by ASOCT module also helps to confirm the clinical diagnosis based on these classification schemes. We have used OCT device that is used commonly for the posterior segment imaging and an anterior segment lens. Posterior segment OCT device is mounted with anterior segment lens over the lens aperture. Proper patient positioning is achieved by adjusting the chin rest. On the monitor, select sclera application and choose small preset icon to obtain a raster line scan over the area of the posterior polar opacity. Then the joystick is gradually advanced towards the patient's eye to focus on the corneal apex. Further as we advance the joystick towards the patient's eye, one by one we can visualize the iris the anterior capsule and then the posterior capsule images are then captured posterior capsule is well visualized even in presence of dense opacity by this technique posterior capsule is seen as thin well defined hyperreflective structure Assessment of posterior capsule integrity can be clearly made out. Intact posterior capsule is seen as a continuous well-defined layer while break in the continuity of this hyperreflective layer suggests posterior capsule dehiscence. This is an example of a case where it was difficult to differentiate between posterior polar cataract and posterior subcapsular cataract clinically. On OCT the opacity was seen in the posterior subcapsular region and the posterior capsule was intact thus the diagnosis of posterior subcapsular cataract was made This is an example of a case who was clinically diagnosed as posterior polar cataracts and AS OCT showed posterior capsule dehiscence which is seen as a break in the continuity of the hyperreflective posterior capsule layer in posterior polar cataracts this technique can be used in diagnosis and grading to differentiate them from posterior subcapsular cataracts and to assess the posterior capsule integrity in cases of posterior polar cataracts Various other techniques are used for assessment of posterior capsule like the ultrasound technique ASOCT device and a 20D mounted on a posterior segment OCT. Our technique has the following advantages it is quick easy to perform and simple procedure and it has got a better image quality compared to other techniques. 
The advantages for the surgeon is it alerts the surgeon of the possible intraoperative complications and it also helps to explain the patient about the visual prognosis of the surgery. To conclude, preoperative assessment of posterior capsule integrity in posterior polar cataracts can be performed in an easy way with finer details by using anterior segment OCT module.